Okay, what I associate with baby mama and baby daddy is basically two people that have a baby but aren't in a relationship that's like romantic. So they're not dating or they're not married or they're not engaged and they're basically living separate lives and most probably dates other people as well. Baby mama and baby daddy drama is fighting over maintenance, <laughs> deciding who's getting the kid on the weekend and then you know the typical moms that keep the kids away from the dads it's like now nah, you can't see your daddy's not paying the maintenance. That's what I associate the drama with. Baby mama and baby daddy drama is the fact that perhaps that the people don't want to look after the child. They don't want to take full responsibility of the fact that they have a child. Do I break it down to my current girlfriend considering that I have a baby? So I can actually tell you that my current girl would be told by fucking means that to see. Where now? Who knows who understand that inga nyagi itzile? Who shatele wambambo? So, I don't think immediately when you guys meet because you don't know exactly where the thing is going but as soon as you can see that something serious is happening that I'm actually like committing myself to you then I should immediately know we actually get excited we actually get really excited when a guy says they do not have kids you know that at Tampa Souls you make inside you're like oh thank god yes baby mama drama Done. I don't want. Please, like, keep it to yourself. I'm good. The minute you go into a relationship, you need to put everything on the table to say, this is who I am and this is what I come with. I need to know what I'm signing up for. Say it from the beginning. Um, I need to decide if I want to be in it or not. And I know there's mother of the child and there's baby mama. I prefer the mother of the child, by the way. I'd rather know from the get-go that, hey, you know what? You have a child and I need to be accommodating in my life because I expect you to be a responsible father. Some men are not cut out for this lifestyle. Yes, they can make a girl pregnant, but they're not cut out for the life of taking care of what happens after. The reason why um, a lot of men out there are not actually taking care of their kids because we've been raised in a society where fathers are not actually there. I have a father. I have a very loving father. I have a father that hasn't worked in years. But he, made, he, he never ran away because he didn't work. He was there through and through, you know what I mean? The simple truth about life is that you'll never, you'll never be ready for a child. There's never a moment where you're rich enough or you're conscious enough or you're aware enough that you're ready for a child. So there's never an opportune or perfect moment. When the time happens, it happens. You just need to act up, that's it. You just need to grow the fuck up, grow some pair of balls and live up to the fact that you didn't, your pull-up game was that weak. You know, in between seasons to make seasons grow. Seasons. <laughs> so our guest today, oh, first of all, I welcome Mangi again. Thank you. My co-host slash assistant. <laughs> um, our guest for today is Noxipath, aka yeah. Nox, Nox and Tromo, um, <laughs> who is an editor by day, a TV editor, and a content producer slash aspiring writer, and also a vlogger. Girl, tell us a little bit more about the vlogging, because this is kind of why we called you here. There's a bit of experience around why for sure so tell us about your vlog well it, the vlog came after a podcast and before the podcast was a blog about married life and divorce life and my kids and everything so out of my blog came the podcast with east coast radio called dear diary then after that i decided to just do my own vlog where i talk about my life my relationships my kids everything okay cool so yeah. now this um First did. Mm. What exactly was it with, in terms of you being a mother? Because that's why we're here today, obviously, is the baby mama, baby daddy drama. So what about your life as a mother was included in that? Um, that uh, a very spicy story about how I actually became a mother is that's what was. <laughs> is that what, what, what do you want me to get into I mean, that? please, if, yeah. if you want to, if you don't want to, it's okay. Okay, no, 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 it's fine. I'll tell the story. So basically, Noxy was married for three years and she got divorced because she fell pregnant by another man while she was married which led to her lots and lots of baby daddy drama now she's a single parent and the baby daddy's gone so before we begin oh no actually now that we've begun i suppose what are your guys's um definition of baby mama slash baby daddy drama Knox, let's start with you 
let's start with what baby mama drama is not. Okay. Actually, okay. as a baby mama, um, I find that a lot of guys seem to think that baby mama drama is baby mama's asking for maintenance. <laughs> Hello, you're supposed to give that. <laughs> or baby mama's being upset with you introducing new people to their children all the damn time. That is not baby mama drama, just a PSA. Um, baby mama drama would be using a child for your own selfish benefit. Mm -hmm. So if I want, if I was still in love with my baby daddy and he was in the picture and we were raising our kids together and now we're no longer together and then I just find little tiny excuses to just fuck shit up for him basically and use my child as a pawn. Mm -hmm. That goes the same for baby daddies as well because your baby daddy drama is real guys. <laughs> There are lots of dads who also do the same. If you've yeah. moved on, they will use your child mm. to try and get you to come back or whatever the case is. That's my definition. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't have like first-hand experience, like uh, old Noxy Puff, but um, from, from, from relatives and from like close friends who've experienced some, uh, a lot of it comes from, I think for me, dudes just not stepping up and, mm. and, and really... Um, like you're saying, just sort of ab abdicating their, you know, their responsibilities, mm. and that's where it seems like drama, but it really, really isn't. Uh, like, I, like I said, I've I've seen it with, uh, you know, with my with my sisters. I've seen it with like my cousins. I've seen it with like very close friends, where they're just asking you to just just be a dad, yeah. just step yeah. up, be a dad, mm. and you know, acknowledge the fact that like, you know, I didn't make this child by myself. Yeah, and exactly. yeah, and and then that is interpreted as drama, not just by the baby daddy, but by society at large. I think just because that's the way it's been positioned. Um, with my opinion, uh, I don't think there is a myth behind baby mama drama. I actually agree with you both in that there is the myth in terms of you know people just wanting you to step up, maintenance, um, come see your child, come do right by your child, where the myth is there, but. I suppose dating a father or um, being in a relationship with someone who has a child, so not being a baby mama but being with her baby daddy, um, I can say I've also seen that the drama does or can exist. Um, and not only with the whole using the child thing as a pawn, because that's not what I've experienced, but just in terms of if the relationship ends and a new one begins and the timeline is a bit muddy or, you know, maybe people aren't fully over things because. You're not introducing someone to lots of people, but even if it's just one, it's like, is it, am I ready for that? For sure. And then there can be drama created from those things where maybe one parent wanted to be a little bit more of the decider of when things are supposed to happen. So shit can sometimes fall out of it. And sometimes even baby daddy drama um, comes in for me as a girlfriend in that I want to spend time with this person, but he has priorities and responsibilities, which he takes really seriously. But now I'm like, so in my head, there's drama because the mom wants him to come do this and that and that. Meanwhile, it's something that's supposed to happen because this yeah. is a shared responsibility. But now maybe I'm exaggerating the effect because now I'm left alone and on a date night or whatever it is. So I do think there's both myth and fact, but we'll delve into that later. Um, what I wanted to know from you is, do you think that there is more sort of a thing on baby mama drama than baby daddies. I feel like baby mamas have it a bit more unfair yeah. than baby daddies. They definitely do. I know a lot of stories about baby daddies, but um, I think it's probably because women are such emotional beings. Like when shit happens, we are going to react. That's just how we are. Mm -hmm. We are not the type to just be calm, just be quiet, just keep it inside. No, I will voice that you are making me angry. Yeah. Whereas men will try and play it cool, try to look cool in the streets, even though they know they're being fucky, but they'll act like, no, everything is fine. So then we get stereotyped, we get put in a box like, yo, yeah, um, when guy niggas spend money, he, she's, she's a lot. Crazy. And also when niggas are trying to score points with potential girlfriends, if, especially if the niggas are hoes, then they will, <laughs> no, for sure, uh, they will paint you out to be a crazy bitch like oh she's so crazy like meanwhile all i'm asking for is what we said for mm. you to just mm. step up mm. i have a friend who's going through a situation right now with her baby daddy and she decided to leave the relationship and he's doing everything in his power to make sure that her life is misery mm. so there's, there's there's lots of things that can happen there's court battles there's oh, yeah. Yeah. 
you know, for me, before we even get to, like, the court battles and all of that sort of, like, really, like, extreme drama, is um, I just want to, especially if, we, if we're kicking it, and it looks like we're going somewhere with, with our situationship, um, I would just like to be informed. You know what I mean? I, just, I, find, I find it really, really, really strange. I mean, I, I, was, I was seeing this girl a long time ago, um, who had a kid, <laughs> who had a kid, and uh, and she like failed to tell me like that she had a kid. That she had a kid. So I just found I, I found it like really, really, really strange. And you know when I found out, and it wasn't even through her by the way, it was through her wow. sister. Um, I was just like, listen, I don't know if I can't trust you with something as big as this. I feel like at some stage in our relationship or situation, some something else is gonna come up, and. You know what I mean, and yeah, we won't be able to handle it because I can't trust you in that way. So for me, just like, just tell me, man, just tell me, because sure. by and large, I don't, I really don't have an issue. I do have a friend who didn't tell me that she had a child um, in the beginning stages, but I was also like, when, when are you gonna drop it if not in the very first date, like? Okay, maybe not first date. No first date uh, because first date, you, first date, I drop it. It can be a deal breaker for forever before I met the baby daddy I'm currently dating now, or whatever. I was a no kids thing. So don't trap me into liking you and then tell me down the line that you have a kid. I think that's super unfair. Um, and I understand that sometimes people want to protect their children or protect themselves or whatever it is, but I just think it's it's lying and it's unfair to make, because some people have it as a deal breaker and you can't get into something with somebody, with something as heavy as a child where that can be a deal breaker and, and not tell someone. But Dave, I, I, I need to see that this is going somewhere before I can tell you. No, like, you for don't me, need to tell for me, me what your child is like, no, or your name, or the school. I need to know first that you date, have first date, first, first date, first date. I need to know you have a child. We haven't even smashed on the first date, eh? Oh, I don't need uh, to know after smashing. Uh, that comes pre-smash. Uh, how did we get I have a child. First date, <laughs> I'm a Sagittarius, my name's Lissoha, I like walks on the beach, and I've got two kids. Yeah. It's a, uh, that's a must. Okay. So for you, it's, it's more like describing yourself, really. Because your kids are part of you, you can't kids. talk about yourself without talking about your kids as a parent. Like, just to come to just. So now we were getting to the deeper things with the court situation. So for for us, a lot of um, baby mama, baby dad drama is a bit more superficial because it's just fights or you know this one can't date this one or whatever's going on or they're using the child as a pawn. But now it gets more hectic, like you were saying, with the whole court um, situation or even mm. disappearing dads, which is also something um, that happens in this country a lot. That's more common than um, I think court situations. Yeah. 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 Um, so what do you think about when you have a father and you have a good relationship? Like, when does it get to that court stage? Is it all necessary? Um, and I mean, like, why? Why is it necessary? Okay, so oof, it's tricky. I was raised by a single parent. Mm. I say she's a single parent because my father is there, but he's not there mm -hmm. that much. Um, I wouldn't say he's completely absent because he's acknowledged me as his child and he does try to see me <laughs> every couple of years. But, <laughs> but um, my mother made a conscious decision not to take him to maintenance court because his giving was inconsistent. Mm -hmm. But for her, it was at least... Like he hasn't just forgotten that you're there. It's just that he doesn't have the means. Which to me, as the child, obviously is not enough of an excuse. Mm. But you do get women who will be like, I'm going to let it slide because he's in the child's life. Mm. And then you get people who are just like, no, this is heavy and I can't do it on my own. I can't do it on my own. <laughs> <laughs> if you are out there watching this. <laughs> But, you know, so that, that that speaks to a lot a lot of a lot of responses that we got uh, when we went and shot this episode in the streets. But also, I've just seen it like from like real life experiences. A lot of niggas are like, uh, "Yo, man, but I can't I can't provide you know for my seed because X, Y, and Z." And for them, providing is like a financial provision. And I think mm. that is that that's something we gotta get rid of as as, as dudes. With it, I, like a lot a lot, lot of the times. People don't like okay obviously it's important to be employed and to have money and to contribute that way but if you can't and you genuinely going to see your child when the mother needs you to do x y take the kid to your hospital or whatever the whatever it is yeah. you need to step up because organizing it went around before it takes you to do x y and z come on that's not impossible and i think that's that's where as dudes we we, we, we tend to get it wrong because we think that yes. we need to we need to provide we need to be the sole provider we need to be the main provider and that's not what a lot of women are looking for and i think in my, sort of my family we've been lucky in that 
like like my whether it's my sisters or whatever we just don't even like acknowledge we don't even like ask these people for money because exactly. we, we can provide for you know for for the kids for sure. but not a lot of families are, are that lucky yeah i think also for me i think maybe I, i'm this might be naive but i feel like you can definitely choose to have a child or not i think a lot of men who use the term mistake and then be like oh but this was a mistake or i didn't want this or whatever if you don't want a child there are so many things you can do to not have a child yeah. that i think that by the time you have a child it doesn't matter if you can or you can't you gotta yeah. Because it just yeah, is yeah, very yeah, possible. Yeah. Uh, three out of four of us here do not have children, probably because we didn't want them. Mm. Mm. And I just think that if it was just this mistake that happens to people, then there'd be a lot more kids. Do yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah. I think that if you're making choices like maybe um, sex without a condom or no contraception, or you're not sure what the other person's contraception is because they might not be your girlfriend. You know, things like that, there, there's steps you can do to prevent that. Mm. Um, and I'm not even talking in the later stages like abortion or whatever, because that's obviously mostly a woman's choice. Um, I think it is something that you should be able to speak about, but obviously there's things like one night stands, or whatever it is. But if you're making the decision to not carefree, then you must step up when <laughs> the nut turns into a child. Why, but why, why, why are you turning off on the first date? Exactly. I mean, also South Africa. <laughs> okay. I thought maybe you're speaking from personal experience. No. Sorry. <laughs> I still don't have children. No, fair that's enough. Fair <laughs> enough. That's another one I do on the first date. I don't have kids. <laughs> I don't want but kids. There's something that, that, that I like what you said, that, you know, like you were raised, for example, by a single parent, right? Sure. And, uh, and again, a lot of people were responding that, guys, in Mzanti, we can't um, ignore the fact that a lot of people, particularly black people, have been raised by single parents. So it's very difficult. I'm not making excuses for, for men, by the way. But if I've never actually, like, seen, like, a father figure in my household, it's difficult for me to try and comprehend... You, you may have seen your mom struggling, but it's, if, if that's like the case, that was Kumbuzo, Gabon Tutuzi, what, 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 and you know what I mean? For you, this is just the norm. So when, when you do that, obviously you're just like perpetuating what's happened in the past. But it's really like just breaking that cycle is really, really difficult for a lot of people. I don't know what, you, what your guys' take on that is. I think, um, look, I understand the whole breaking the cycle thing, but does that necessarily mean that I must chase a nigga to take care no, of his sure. child? No, you know? for sure, yeah. Because also, guys, maintenance squats is a lot for the game. Like, you sit, like, I, mm. <laughs> like, you are up and down for months on end for a thousand rand. Yeah. Because also the court is going to say, oh, it's going to look at the pay slips and who's doing what and who's earning what and how much can be deducted and how much is left over and all of that nonsense. Mm. And you end up walking away with next to nothing. Mm. Some women end up asking themselves, is it really worth it for me to be doing all of this, wasting my money, taking taxis, driving up and down, maintenance court, only for a thousand rand at the end of the day a month. Mm -hmm. you know? So in as much as, yes, we should be breaking the cycle, I feel like it's up to a man's conscience mm -hmm. at the end of the day. I actually feel like if you are raised from a single mother, um, it's even more important that you remember maybe how difficult it was to get to school, to see your mom trying to put in together or having 10 jobs or running after this dad or just the disappointments and dealing with you when your dad doesn't come when he says... So I just feel like why would you ever want to perpetuate something that you saw as an example sure. how much of a struggle it was? Um, also, I do know men who've had absent fathers, non-existent dads, terrible dads, who have become great fathers. So I think at some age, you need to stop blaming your past about things. And that includes yeah, a lot of things, sure, not just sure. fathers. But, and just be like, you know what, it's my responsibility to step up because I know what a good dad and a good mom are. I've seen examples of it in life. I've heard about those situations. Therefore, I'm going to do better. Yeah. But we have a question from a Zama Zamini to you, Shmaz, Um And it's, <laughs> have you ever dated a baby mama? I want to extend that question. If yes, how was it? What was the situation? If no, why not? Mm. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> so, like I said, so, <laughs> so uh, in, in my gap year, like I said, I was, I was seeing this chick who uh, who had a kid who just didn't reveal, and that <laughs> that obviously that, that ended quite abruptly because I was like, well, I can't trust you. Mm -hmm. um, more recent past. Uh, I've I haven't obviously haven't dated. I mean, you guys know my last few girlfriends. I haven't, I haven't dated. I haven't dated a baby mama, but I've seen a uh, I've seen a girl or two who have babies. What a scene! Um, what a scene! 
Like yeah. someone, 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 someone who, someone Smash who has, him. someone Smash. who has, someone who has a child. You saw you him in what capacity? <laughs> yeah, you, you were, you were babsing, you were dating, you were all C. Uh, I don't know about babsing, but definitely on the way to dating. Okay. Yeah, and then on, what was your experience with that? Chilled, chilled, chilled. That's which is really what's informed my like opinion now about it. Like, I don't really have an issue, uh, as long as you, you, you know, you gotta just give me the, you know, the, the agency to make that decision of whether I want to stay in or out. But like, I have, I have no issues, uh, particularly with, with the woman, um, in my experience, they been, you know, it's, they don't, they don't expect you to be a stepfather, yeah, which is what I think sure. a lot of people uh, misunderstand, misunderstand. Yes. you know, they think that, no, they're like, they are good. All of them are, are good. And I think the, maybe the difference between our experiences, for instance, might be that if it's just seeing, then of course there's going to be no real, yeah. probably didn't even meet the kids or whatever nah, it is. Um, but obviously, if you do date a parent, I just want to put it out there, if you date a parent, you're going to deal with exes a lot, so you have to be very sort of self-satisfied, self-esteem high, no you know, mm -hmm. jealousy or whatever it is, because the, especially because, I mean, for instance, um, my boyfriend's kid is quite young. So the communication, he doesn't have a phone. Communication has to be between ex and, and boyfriend. Um, and if you've got any sort of these, like like I said, weird jealousies of him having to go to the house, him having to deal with the phone, calling to speak to the kid, whatever it is, um, going to pick him up, then you're gonna, you're gonna be very stressed. Mm -hmm. So if you have any sort of jealousies, I would say stay away. If you have any sort of, you know, the, also the thing of being a main priority, especially if he's a hands-on dad, because I'm also dating a very hands-on dad, to, know that there's going to be times where dates are cancelled, vacations need to be put on hold, um, you're going to be spending time that you thought might have been your time maybe alone because he's now sick, he has to go. So just knowing that like that's okay, being patient um, because, and that can create drama if you're not one of those people. Mm -hmm. So stay away if you don't have those things because good life, good stuff. But surely, but surely and, and, and I guess this is to both you guys, um, you also need to set boundaries, okay. surely, for your, you know what I mean? Like, your partner needs to be like, listen, to the ex, or whatever, like, yo, um, unless it's an absolute emergency, mm -hmm. you can't call me at night. You can't, no, you know what sure. I mean? Just like those, those sort of boundaries, and you can't, I don't even want a, a young, I love you on the side. Like, <laughs> What? Like, like can't, can't see yo. You know what I mean? And don't okay, continue that. Doing this, this uh, no. No, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, uh, yeah. and so, and so in, in, in that, has it been easy for you guys to like set those sort of boundaries or was the onus on look, the ex or like the, how, the how does it work? The onus is completely on the boyfriend, hey, or the person that you're dating. Because I don't want to lie, when two people have a child together, it's a serious connection. Mm. Like it's, it's very deep mm. and you, w mm. there will be moments that maybe by serious do you mean romantic <laughs> yeah by serious do, do you mean romantic no 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 i want to have a conversation tonight <laughs> i don't mean Tell romantic me but there will be moments where the father and the mother share things about their child mm -hmm. that will invoke emotions Mm -hmm. And for both parties, mm -hmm. not emotions in the sense that now they're gonna get back together <laughs> or they're gonna smash, mm -hmm. but there'll always be that ish. Yeah, you and I, we made this, we made mm -hmm. this person, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But that's part of setting the boundaries to be like, listen, although we share a child, um, you know, you that that person just needs to understand, Uguti, it's over, skirt Dover. And there's no chance of getting back. That's but okay. you are the one that needs to set that boundary. I think anyone who has a child needs to wait um, a long time before getting into a new relationship because it is not okay to enter when it's still messy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's the problem is that you're also playing with like a new person's feelings where now you there's any moment now you could go back or there's this or you're still sleeping with your baby like that kind of shit you need to um, get rid of mm -hmm. uh, and and make sure you heal. Both parties, actually, because you can also be have a boyfriend who's moved on, what, 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 but then if you have an ex who's still wanting him and then creating drama for your life, now all of a sudden she's showing up, she wants to fight, she wants to, just bullshit like that. Because my experience um, of my step parents and my parents was very cordial, very beautiful, very seamless for the kids. And I think if people are mature, and what we're trying to do in our situation is remember that the kid is the most important person. And it wasn't easy in the beginning, I wasn't like, besties with her. I mean even now I'm not gonna call her for dinner and tea and whatever it is 
but when there's a birthday party, when there's a concert, everybody gets along for the kid. Um, and also just because the drama's finished. Like there was tick, 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 tick in the beginning. For sure. Um, but I think we've all, it's been three years now. Like if there was still drama now, I wouldn't also be able to put up with it. Um, but there's a question from another one of our viewers, Theo Tawang. Is it um, realistic to expect to date a non-mother or non-father in your 30s? So that was actually where I was going mm. at with, with when, you, when uh, Zama's question came mm. along. I was like, but I'm also like, you know, I'm post 30. Like the likelihood is so high that you're going to encounter someone with a child. Mm. You know what I mean? So you, even you, like, unless you, unless now, like, you increase your dating pool and you're now just going for girls that are like under 25. Like, it's really, really like, you know what I mean? Like, just be realistic, my nigga. Yeah. I don't know about like girls. Well, that's what do you think? Um, for us girls, I feel like the <laughs> meeting a guy who doesn't have a child is like a miracle. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> every motherfucker has a child out here in these streets. <laughs> and and all these niggas that were teen dads. Like, so it's very difficult to find a guy who has never had a child. And I feel like women are more accepting of it than sure, men are. Sure. Cause, and for men, I was reading an article that was written by Kaya Langa, I think in 2015 or something, where men were saying that it's not the, the fact that the, the mother has a child is not the issue. The issue is the fact that there's a father, especially if the father's in the picture. Now it creates competition. So it's not necessarily really? what we think. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's not necessarily what we think would be an issue. For, for most guys, they're just like, ish. I had a guy who once told me, would see I would definitely date a baby mama if the baby daddy was dead. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Wow. Like that nigga cannot be in the picture popping up now and then trying to reminisce, trying to, you know. Mm. For me, I have new, because, okay, like I said, before my dating list, like, no-nos were drug taking and having a kid. <laughs> like, literally one and two. <laughs> um, and then I fell into Swansea and woke up and I was there. Um, but... I think more for me, what I want to know from you, if you have a child, I still kind of expect that if I broke up with this person, I don't know if I'd go back into it, because like I said, the beginning is quite heavy, mm. and there's so much shit you have to shift through, sift through rather, to get to this point of like pleasantries and whatever. So I just don't know if I put myself in that situation willingly again. But like you said, the pool of non-fathers is quite small. But for me, I want to know how long it's been since you guys had your kid. Mm. I don't think someone under like five would tickle my fancy must also be like five years since you broke up sure. um, and then how good a dad you are because actually I'm finding myself mm. like mm. not you know when pregnant women have that thing when babies cry and they start like leaking in the nipples yes. like I had that for like great dads but like not leaking in the nipples <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> That's when weird, someone is like a great dad yes. and like it's just it's a turn on, on. Like, you know, it is. like I see men like and it's now become my thing like I actually feel like I'm attracted more to men who are good dads yeah. um, that's so sexy. those are the two things I find out. If you are a good dad and you are active in your child's life, and I don't mean like when you go pick him up, you literally pick him up, put him down, and like, oh, I'll be back next month to pick him up. <laughs> like actually <laughs> being in his life mm -hmm. and then how long it's been since the relationship. Those are two very Ended. important factors. Mm -hmm. I feel you. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, what I will say though is that um, what, I, what I would like to avoid is, uh, especially with like deadbeat dads or you know, ancient niggas, is that very often, and shame, it's not because uh, uh, women are just doing it willingly, but very often, you obviously will be the one at the receiving end of it. You know what I mean? And it, my experience has been very minimal in that regard, but you are on the receiving end of someone who is just like dropping the ball. And this is, this is not someone who's expecting you to now step up and pay fees and not, no, no, no. But obviously from an emotional support perspective, they're just like, you know, you, you also now and you just have to, to just do something. Just do something. Yeah. Step up. Not for the kid. For for her. Actually, Nox, let's ask you that. So when you're dating someone new or when you're interested in someone, do you have sort of questions that you ask them on a first date about what kind of responsibility they take and how they feel about kids and or do you just let it happen and then kind of see later yes. to drop in those types of responsibilities? <laughs> 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 also, this is not a good question for me because uh, my dating life is a bit weird right now. But I will say, um, okay, because I'm not really looking for somebody to be in my life, in my life, I don't really share much about my, my kids, you know. So 
the guy that I've been constantly seeing right now has a child, mm -hmm. which makes it so much easier. Mm -hmm. He has a daughter, so he gets it. Mm -hmm. Like, he gets it. Play dates, Nyana? No, we're not there yet. I don't think, I don't know if we're going to get there. Hi, guy, if you're watching, are we? <laughs> <laughs> what are we? <laughs> what are we? Text 55504. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, other guys who don't have kids, I don't really, unless a guy is forthcoming, with asking those kind of questions about so what kind of guy are you looking for asking questions about my kids very interested in my kids mm. i don't go there mm. my kids are mine and i just keep it that way okay like yeah and then but uh, you know in, in in you also now being obviously not uh, a single mother but a single woman and just living her best life mm. how do you navigate so sort of not just the dating world but like the potential of like introducing mm -hmm. someone to your kids and then we hear um and then and then yeah so like how do you how do you navigate I that i have never introduced anyone to my children mm -hmm. yet okay. um but i'm i always think that when i do it would have to be towards a very serious step for me to be able to open that part of my life to mm. my children you would have to be quarter to engaging me ah. mm. or quarter to no for sure so mm. if you or quarter to years, something serious mm. understand or mm. we're living together we are together it's it's stable we're doing this mm. you know i'd give it at least two years before i introduce mm. somebody to my children mm. um because also eesh, this but, if, but even that then so how how does it work do you go to like a hotel if you guys are trying to babs like because if he comes to your place that he, he might Ooh, he might bump thing. into your kid mm. and vice versa right i'm not the best person to ask that question because my children actually live at home with my mother oh in okay. Durban. okay so but i do have friends who actually live with their kids and it is tricky it's very tricky um but most of them have nannies so if they want to do the thing. I have a friend who even sneaks guys through her sliding door <laughs> <laughs> at night. I think on the other side also, it can be quite like touching in a negative way to have somebody not feel like they can trust you if you feel like you're there. So I understand if you're like in the dating phase or whatever it is, but I remember even in my situation, it took maybe something like two-ish years or one and a half years or whatever for him to make that introduction. And I remember just thinking like, Okay, but I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. We've said we're boyfriend and girlfriend. We've said I love you. We've all married, done the whole thing. Like, am I not motherly enough? Do you not see mm. us longer term than this? Was I like sort of a phase? And then, you know, like in a year's time, you dropped. Like, why am I not? Mm. Is it it didn't have nothing? anything to do with you. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I would now I know that. Yeah. Yeah. Now I know that. Yeah. But also, I would imagine that the difficulty comes from then having like an emotional bond with the kids, yes. right? Because it's, it's, I feel like it's inevitable. I also said if we break up, like, I'm, I'm going to visit. Like I'm, I'm coming and visit your child. You can wave. Like I, you can't let go of like sort of relationships like that. And I'm, I'm very attached to friends. Um, I mean, except the exclusion of men, but friends and, uh, ooh, that's it actually. But, <laughs> and children. I want to sort of remain in that space. I can't yeah. imagine just being like peace out forever and yeah. like, do you know what I mean? But also, I mean, like, the, the, Not, that would, doesn't that like, sort of clown with the kid? I mean, especially if they're like, oh my God, this guy is fantastic and my dad is a piece of shit. It does kind of time with them because you start to see the difference. My stepdad has been in my life for 26 years mm. and I see the differences. Obviously, I'll never verbalize it to my father, my biological father. Actually, you ain't shit, nigga. But in my head, I'm just like, this nigga pick, from crash, this nigga would pick me up, drop mm. me off at school. This mm. nigga was there for school plays. This nigga was, there, was just there. Mm in comparison to the real father stroke sperm donor but let's not so now in your situation because you've kind of spoken about having your own sort of sperm donor if you will um would you have your kids call whoever you start dating like sort of dad or have them how, how are you going to navigate also that situation of mm. letting them know that this maybe is not your dad or is it like okay this is your dad mm. um, kids are very smart um kids are actually smarter than we think i remember for me it came naturally to call my stepdad dad, even though I knew he wasn't mm -hmm. my biological father. You know, um, I think unlike our parents, I would probably have a conversation when I feel like my kids are old enough to say, hey, your father actually isn't. But do you not think they would now be like, tse, tse, tse. we've been lied to the whole time? No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, that's tricky, actually. 
Well, as, as the in, easiest thing is to say Umaluma is my man, and then Umaluma is not living, so clearly Umaluma is now a dad. Yeah. <laughs> but this, that's a trick though about being black, right? It's just like you also just can't be like, oh, listen, hi, this is Mangi. I'm like, I'm like, I am definitely not Mangi to you. I'm, yes, Umaluma. I'm not Mangi to you, but I'm also not your uncle. Yeah, but you are. Everybody is older is an uncle. Because we're at that age, like, yes, we're still though. young. <laughs> but if I introduce my kids, I'm not your girlfriend, but if I introduce my kids, I'm totally okay with you. Are, Nums and Bileni. Nums and Bileni. Nums and Bileni. I am totally okay with that. Because for me, I think my, my boyfriend's kids, I think he might be a little bit confused about like what it means, this whole thing. Um, because I'm not sure if he, and he knows I'm a girlfriend. He's like, this is my girlfriend. Whatever he knows, daddy's girlfriend, whatever it is. Um, but I'm not sure if he knows quite what that is. How old is he? Uh, he just turned six. He knows. Because I remember the one time I said to him, No, um, how would you feel if like daddy and I had a kid or whatever? He's like, No, but daddy already has a kid. I was like, Nigga, <laughs> help me. <laughs> help me. So I don't know if he knows that that leads to marriage and marriage and potential. Oh, I, so. I think he thinks girlfriend is like, Play, play. I don't know. A girl a life, a like friend. a friend who's a girl, or like yes. these things. You know, little kids have girlfriends. They write them love letters, but next week something else, or whatever. Yes. So I'm not sure if he gets the gravity of what a girlfriend could potentially mean. Mm. Um, and so, how do you explain that type of thing? Because I also, when I went in there, I was like, I actually don't want to be anti lesoho. I want to just be like, like I'm 26. I'm still twerking. I just want to be <laughs> for now. And now I'm trying to change, and I'm like, no, call me anti lesoho now because it's been three years, and now. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, and you can't, you can't change those type of things. Um, but yeah. just to wrap up our episode, uh, what do you guys then take from this whole baby mama, baby daddy thing? Now that we've broken it down a bit, do you still think it's a myth? Do you still think it's what it is? And how do we change the perception of what those things are? <laughs> Why me? Special, special <laughs> guests. Special guests, special um, expert. Baby mama drama, baby daddy drama is not a myth. There are real things that are happening out here. There are real problems between baby mamas and baby daddies. So it, it's it's not just J, a a lie or a joke. Mm -hmm. It gets very serious. It can get to the point where someone's not allowed to see their kids anymore. So it's it's quite deep. In terms of what was your question? Changing perception. perception. Mm, as in, guys, <laughs> to be honest. Being in a situation where there's baby mamas and baby daddies is never going to be easy. Mm. So, I don't think it's... It gets any easier. It doesn't, it's, it, it gets easier with time, yes it does. But I don't want to lie to people and say we need to change perspective because then you're going to start thinking that when you walk into it, it's, it's not what you think. It is what you think. It's a lot of things going on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we must ready like ourselves. A, just, just be ready. It's like walking into a marriage or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just take, take people's advice. Listen. Be ready. It's not, it's not, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. But it's also not impossible mm -hmm. to get through. I mean, mm -hmm. it makes you stronger, also. So. Yeah. Um, I think for me, the the one thing is. Um, I think on both ends, male and female, don't hide your kids. Like that's important. But <laughs> like, for Shame, me, man, this thing for, is really for un me particularly, un just don't <laughs> hide your kids, man. No, it didn't hurt me. <laughs> it just made me think that's like funny. this is bizarre. Um, you know, don't hide your kids. And obviously, particularly to the to the cheetahs, it's just like yo, we need uh, we need to step up. I've been very very fortunate in that even like my closest friends who are fathers. Um, are very present, like yeah. incredibly present. I've actually seen in most cases with my mates that the mom is less present mm. than the dad, which is obviously a, a very rare occurrence in Mzansi overall. But yeah. that, that gives me courage that we are definitely sort of breaking that cycle bit by bit. And, and, and generally, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really open to, um, uh, to, to uh, dating someone who, who has a child. Particularly because I'm in a phase now in my life where I'm looking for a blesser. <laughs> and we spoke about this. Yeah. Before you say so something. So that, that's how I close. Like, yeah. uh, you know, especially you with all the women. Um, Blessers <laughs> apply. Yeah. He's very handsome. <laughs> and he's smart. Um, what well, were you going to ask? Or say? I was going to say also, social media dads must fall. Stop it. 
Where you have see like a you? collection of 10 pictures in one weekend and then you yes. spread them over the year to make it seem like you're there. Yes, you're not there. Oh, okay. See, I go on, yeah. Oh, okay. See, I was good to you. I ain't shit, nigga. Stop posting these kids <laughs> acting like you're in their lives. It's very irritating to the mothers. That's when you start getting big mama drama because your ass is just trifling. Actually. So, my last comments. <laughs> My last comments is that I fully believe, um, or I fully have experienced, um, that there can be baby mama, baby daddy drama, um, and sometimes subsequent partners can be collateral damage, sometimes your kids can be collateral damage, um, but I think more than anything, to change perceptions, for me it just makes no sense that we're still doing the same shit that like our grandparents did, yeah. um, and more so for them it was mainly because of like migrant labor, someone had to go, therefore he couldn't be there for his kids. Now you have no fucking excuse. Like, if you can't get, like you said, you can't pay this amount a month, so you feel a little bit embarrassed. Okay, Shep, look, may, may I can only pay this much a month. Do you mind if I maybe do it in installments? Also, don't be going to Taboo, throwing bottles in the sky, bad bitches, what, 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 and then telling me that you don't have Money. 450 rand a month to just help our kid out. Mm. Um, so I do think that it's a very, uh, very present issue, and I'm just really sad that it hasn't changed much from people who've experienced it, from people who should know better, from all the literature that's out there, all the experiences that are out there, that you're still ancient. Anyway, uh, last question from this Zama. I think call Zama, because Zama seems very interested. Also, which Zama is this? Zama Jamini. She was like, would you date a baby mama? And now she wants to know, are you single, Shmay? I am. Hey, that's Zama. Are you going to do anything about it, Zama? <laughs> so Zama yeah. I will DM you his number. Let's make this happen. Uh, anyway, from us, the team at Unfiltered. Noxie, thank you so much. This has been thank such you. a fun, very open, very frank chat. Thank you for sharing mm. um, some of your, you know, more personal um, situations, whatever. Um, it's been a pleasure to have you. And it's been a pleasure to vlog. be here. Just um, give us your social, your vlog again, so people can go see Divorced Girl. Oh, yes. Um, my vlog is on Facebook. It's called At The Divorce Girl, Noxy Indoni. It's N-O-X-Y space I-N-D-O-N-I. -N and my Facebook page is called The Diary of a Young Wife. Guys, it's Follow so interesting. Me. Can I tell you, I was... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, good night from us, and see you next next time. In, I want to. I don't want to give it in a fortnight. In a in a yeah, mm. just now. When so. we make peace. Bye. Why are we doing this? Peace. <laughs>